Hey guys, good evening. Welcome to our viewer's choice class. We have Claudia and Ashish here and our online audience. Welcome. And we have a, we have a bunch of, I think, uh, a bunch of. We have a group of uh, pastors. I'm just kidding. Downstairs playing, please. They don't didn't join us. That's, a, that's okay. All right. So here's a game played in a lower section of some German league or something. Lenhard, Lenhard L-E-N-H-E. A R D T sent this game. I think, as far as I understand, he was black in this game and uh, he lost. And he had a few questions, and I'm trying to analyze this game. I fully try to analyze the game. The, the reason I chose it, first of all, it seemed thorough. The questions were kind of clear. And the second is that I figured that it was an interesting opening to share, and there's some details to discuss here. All right, D4, F5, Dutch defense, right? Now, let me ask everyone, and also our online audience, so how many setup black has after playing f5? Suppose white, and white played g3. Against this setup, white playing g3, how many, against the move g3, how many setup black has? How many setup of the pieces? There, so Lenin, which one is Leningrad? G6, knight f6, bishop g7 with d6. You can also play g6, knight f6, bishop g7 with e6. You also can play what? You can play knight f6, e6, then b6. If, if y plays knight f3, right? You can play you can play stonewall, e6, d5. What else? e6, d6, bishop b7, knight f6, right? With queen e8. You can play classical with c6. Then you play queen e8. What else? Is there anything else? That's about it. That's about it. So uh, black plays e6. Now this is very tricky in this moment. So after bishop g2, knight f6. Now, we, okay, Leningrad is out of the picture, but uh, what other systems now? Go ahead, tell me. d6, e5 is one plan. With bishop e7, right? D5, c6 is, is one line, right? Is one setup, is that right? And uh, d6, c6. So, given that black hasn't shown us what he wants to do, what shall we do, you think? So a lot of people, for example, when they see this, the reason I'm asking is that, also for our online audience, this is very important. They see this and they assume that black is going to play d5. Okay? And a lot of people like to play knight h3 and bishop f4 against the bishop on d6. And they end up playing this move knight h3, which is, in my opinion, is, is a bit inaccurate. Or maybe very inaccurate, because now black plays bishop e7, castle, castle, and now after c4, d6. Now, when I play e5, the knight on h3 is awkward, right? So it's better not to commit the knight there. So I think, actually, I actually let me see if I, if my game is here. Yeah, here's my game. So the, another reason I chose this game is that I wanted to brag about my win, huh? <laughs> so, uh, in my game, I played, uh, my opponent played d6 right away, which is actually not the most accurate uh, way of playing. And after knight d2, I kind of challenged him. Now I want to go e4 right away. I was telling him to play d5 now. I actually, he could play. I checked later. Because my knights are not kind of so great. And after e5, castle, uh, e4, it kind of became a very interesting position. Completely different type of position. Make sense? So he kind of caught me. But I try to kind. Of, I realize that if if I stay and then play the just regular moves, I cannot get stuff so muddy. So I I immediately enter that position and I and I won the game actually. It was equal, but he messed up. So this is actually more accurate. Bishop e seven. And now he played knight c three. I believe e five is is a is a possible move here, which black played. Right now the knight on h three has some problems. Right. But black doesn't have one thing. What does black doesn't? What black lacks in this position? What's black's main problem? Black doesn't have development, right? 
There's one more thing also. There's so many open lines in the position, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think White did in this moment? Huh? He played a very interesting move. Also, I wait for our audience because there's a 20 seconds delay. So I'll wait for our audience to see if what they what they what they think of, of, of this move. They can check whatever they want. The game is not in database, so that's fine. <laughs> they can they can try to find the game. Why play a very interesting move? In my opinion, a good practical move makes makes things very difficult over the board. Queen b3, I go c5. I, I can go even king, king uh, uh, c5, b7 is hanging. Wait. No, no. Queen b3, I go e4. I mean, knight comes to f4, but then I go knight c6, and uh, I don't know. John proposes d5. John proposes d5. That is a big positional mistake, because it's all about we want to free that knight on h3, bring it to the game. You should not play d5. It blocks your own bishop, and you're way behind in your attack on the king side, queen side. And they have to deal with the bad knight on h3. After h6, that knight is kind of doomed. Maybe uh, uh, b4? b4? Yeah. b4, I uh, go a5, for example, or e4. Or even knight c6. What do you want to do against knight c6? Okay, c5. What well, is says c5? Any other moves? No. no? Okay. c5. Yeah, that's what he played. I like that. Another move was thinking b3 is interesting. Queen e8, because that's the plan you want to play. Queen e8 and bishop a3. And I was thinking the move is, in an actual game, black played knight c6. I don't like that. But I like the move knight a6. Defending the pawn on c7 and preparing the move c6. Then knight goes to c7 to e6. So after queen d2, c6. Now, these two squares, d5 and b5, are taken away from this knight, and we're kind of in control of the center. And after rook a c1, for example, and the other one goes to d1, right? I go h6, completely restricting that knight on h3. Mm -hmm. Rook ft1, bishop e6. I think black is perfectly fine here. The problem of the knight on h3 is still there. You see that? Now I want to go queen h5, f4, maybe. I, I cannot go queen h5 because e7 is hanging, but. Maybe queen f7, rook a e8, and then queen h5. Black has gradual process of improvement. Although, and all, uh, although there's also another move, g5 f4 is also a possibility, right? Good? Are we good on that? Makes sense? So, um, instead, okay, black, white plays c5. I like this move. e d4 runs into c d6, knight b5. Okay? E D4, and then the knight comes to F4 right away. It just becomes very active, and white is ahead in development. If that knight comes to the game, then it's a problem for black, because black is too tempy down in development, and his king is weak. So black played queen e8 in the game. I found king h8 more appealing, because I just get my king out of the way, right? Now after C D6, C D6. D e5, D e5, queen d8, rook d8, knight, uh, bishop e3. Now what do we do here? It's just simple, knight c6. Knight g5, king g8, rook a d1. Now here, the last solution. E4. 
you have to kill that bishop h6 I go bishop takes c6 let me tell you this is a problem I can maybe take on d8 first I don't know now these problems these pawns are a problem but maybe maybe it's already maybe close to losing for black e4 is, is very important this was a game I think Nisipiano against Azar of 2008 as I was looking at so King H8 I like this better and you know the thing is that you leave your pawns intact e4 may be playable but e4 then white's white's uh, white goals are achieved right he gets the f4 square for the knight so he, he justifies his plan with the knight on h3 so i think king h8 is the right move but here black played queen e8 what's the setback of this move well i mean okay it's not only about the pawn Queen b3, I can go queen f7, right? Bishop e6. Ah, take, take, take on b7. Maybe. But the thing is also, I can sacrifice the pawn and then play knight c6. I'm not worried about being two pawns down. You can take on b7. I can I can activate my pieces. That's okay. I can go king h8. I think. Queen b3. I go king h8. I'm not worried about giving up to b7 pawn. Take 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 knight c6. Black is very active. So he goes CD6. I, what I like here is to CD6, CD6. I like Queen B3 check and uh, Knight G5. And there's also there's some moves. So I, I like this move. Queen Queen B3 check, Knight G5. E4, and now Rook D1. Actually, I was checking different moves. Rook D1. Now next move, I'm going to play Knight E6. Get the two bishops, right? And I have constant pressure on the pawn structure. I can. Move the bishop to g5, e3, bishop comes to c4. I'll, I, I will be the first one who gets the c-file, right? Takes queen, takes f5 is hanging, then f3 will be played. It's, it's a constant hassle for black. Make sense? Doesn't make sense. Nobody followed, huh? Yeah. Does it make sense, Ben? It makes sense to me. Okay. I'm the only one that matters. Sounds good. Ben Simon, the man of the man in the arena. The tea is clicking. Do you hear this? It's clicking? Yeah, I, I'm brewing tea and the, the mug is clicking. Well, like that's clock. okay. That's all right. That's okay. Okay. That's good actually. Don't have don't have coke. Yeah. Sugar is bad for you. Yeah. Sugar is bad for you. I I'm just very tired. I need some. I didn't have time to brew some coffee because I I need to sleep tonight. So, any comments? Any comments online? Any questions? No? Good. Good. Very quiet folks tonight. Very quiet folks. Okay. D takes e5, d takes e5, knight d5. All right. Knight c7 is a threat. If you take on d5, queen takes d5, knight g5, that's bad as well. So I gotta go bishop d8. Good. Bishop g5, this, knight takes f6. Now, here's the first, mis first mistake from black side. So black played re really well, and white missed his chance. So this queen e8 was bad. Then cd is, was okay, but de wasn't so good. Then here, he had to take with the bishop first to have the knight on d5, right? And he take here, and then here black made a mistake, took with the bishop. I think gf6 is very good. And then bishop e6. And we still do what? Play against that knight on h3. Makes sense? Makes sense to Ben Simon. I, don't, I know that one. I don't need to check that one. But well, does it make sense to you guys? 
Makes sense to the audience. They're not saying anything. That's fine. I just asked if they were alive. Sure. Okay. Are we good? Good. No. Again, the entire the entire uh, idea is against to play against that knight on h three. Well, I wouldn't say is is entire idea is to play against that knight h three. The entire idea is based on playing against that knight on h three. Keep it out of the game. Could you play like F4? F4, E4. No, I'm trying to play like knight F2. Yeah, and then I go H5. And you, you now your bishop is out. Then H3, G4. Well, that, that then you weaken your king as well. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I mean, okay. Black took the bishop and then now, now he took with a G pawn. But it was better to keep the bishop on the board. Why is it better? Because when there are less pieces on the board, the advantage of having an active piece may not be as visible as when there is more pieces on the board. Because now after he plays e3, king h3, I think that wasn't necessary. He could just go bishop e6. I don't think he needs to move the king unless, unless white plays like this, then he can go h5 and then king h8, rook, rook g8. So he played king h8 fine. He, white played f4. Now you see white can afford playing like that. But with the bishops on the board, this wouldn't be that easy, right? There's bishop b6 check. The bishop, the bishop on fg5 would be on the, uh, on the way. If you put the bishop on h6, then it would be stuck, right? So it was hard to find a place for the bishop. If I go back here, if I put my bishop on e3, I don't have the, the plan with f4. If I put it on d2, I'm blocking my own bishop, my queen, right? So it's not so easy to come up with a plan then to play f4. That's why g takes f6 was so important. So now, okay, but I mean, that doesn't mean black is worse. Okay, now the knight comes back to the game, which is not really in the game if you think about it. The, white, the white's knight is not completely outplayed, but it's not really in the game to the knight on f2 doesn't do much, unless white manages to play the move g4, correct? Mm -hmm. At this moment, who has better minor pieces? Black has better minor pieces. Bishop e6. Can we agree on that? Does it make sense to everyone? Hmm? Queen e2, queen f7, b3, bishop c4 was a threat, right? And he played a5. I think, uh, you see, I've mentioned this move knight b4. Okay, knight b4 is computer's move. Queen e7 was my move. h5 was also my move. Computer was okay with it. a5 wasn't among the top choices. I, I don't understand what knight b4 is. Why not go to d5 probably? Knight d5 going to c3. That's what the, that's what the engine likes. I like the move queen e7 because you're always ready to face g4 and let white to take on f5 because it can take with the bishop and e4 is well protected, right? Queen e7. Now you have, uh, here you have protection, right? And you, you always can play this maneuver if you want, right? So you play a5, g4, rook g8, so far so good, king h1, and he played f takes g4, unnecessary. Now, here is a very thorough question, you can spend some time to work on it, knight e7, g takes f5, bishop, knight, f, knight takes f5. First, first question, what happens after knight takes e4? Yeah, that loses right around spot, right? This is game over. So I have to take bishop takes e4. a4, playing active. We're down a pawn, but first of all, the f uh, uh, first matter, there aren't so much, so many pawns left on the board, right? So if you trade off everything, you end up in a derogish position. Second matter is that what? Uh, w we have to stay active. We have given up material, so we have to stay active. So with the active play, for example, ba4 runs into Rook a4, rook takes e4, or bishop c4. Both matters are kind of th threatening, right? So I said, I looked at rook g1, but rook g1 I just can take and take here, and take here. If, if uh, b takes a4, then bishop c4. It's not fun to play. Mm -hmm. So, 
so um, the question is rook g1 takes 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 now we cannot take on b3 if f5 is hanging what do we do as black queen g7 i go b4 now we need some good moves here otherwise white plays few moves with the knight and queen f2 and then we're down a pawn we need to make some good moves here bishop takes f5 rook g1 Okay, so queen six is problematic. Claudio, what do you think? Knight g3 check. Knight g3 check? Yeah, I take the queen h5. Oh, the queen h5. I mean, you can play, you can play f5, then queen h6. That's very odd. Because you go f takes e4, I go queen f6 check. Actually, it's not 100% uh, over. You have to move f5. Ah, the thing is that, the thing is, I can go knight h3, knight h3, knight g5. I think that's the problem. I think this is this is the problem. So let's let's look at these lines. Takes takes. Queen h5. What's that? Well, I mean, it, there's no other move. Rook g7, rook g8 check, right? Rook a8 check. I even can yeah. So f f5. I think I have this move. Yes. Okay. And takes. I think that's the answer, huh? Yeah, and the queen h6, I think, runs into takes, takes, rook g1. It's still down the pawn. The answer is play active, knight h4. Queen b2. Well, first of, uh, first, uh, first off, f5 is a threat, right? f5 is a major threat. So queen b2 is forced, and I play bishop f5. Bish okay, if bishop d5, I go bishop b6, perpetual. <laughs> so rook c1, white is trying, and then black plays b5. And it's a, it's a very funny rook one situation. White has to, white does not have an improving move. Now I want to take the bishop. Now you have to move the bishop, and you... You keep attacking the bishop with your bishop. This game is going to end in a draw. Hard to see over the board. But you could intuitively think that it's, you should have activity on the G file, and that will give you the draw, probably. Not that black is losing with what he did, just he bought himself some trouble. So knight e7 was the way. And actually, it makes sense, right? I mean, white is weakening his king, so you have to shift your pieces toward, towards uh, white's king, right? Mm-hmm. Make sense? Yeah. I mean, I know Ben makes sense for Ben. Then I have no problem with that, obviously. Makes sense. Claudio, makes sense? Hmm? Yeah, An audience has nothing to say, right? It's good. Uh, they had some wrong answers earlier. Wrong answers? Yeah. If, you have, if they have any questions, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to address them, unless I'm not addressing them. So, so, uh, 
So you play f takes g4, not that it's a drastic. But the, another th thing is that <coughs> f takes g4 doesn't make sense. You're closing down your own rook. Right? Yeah. That's the. So now you might say, okay, I have a pawn near opponent's uh, king, but really doesn't do anything. Bishop d5, rook a d1. Now there's a threat of rook takes d5, right? Rook a d8, and knight plays rook takes d5. Okay, this is a good move. Queen takes d5, takes queen d2. Still not losing, still fine. Here, I found a very difficult draw with black, uh, on a high depth with the computer, but I think after a4, it's very hard to play over the board. Bishop and rook, I play h3. Uh, you have to play h3, just make sure. Oh, h3 maybe you cannot play. I thought I can play h3. Uh, you can play h3. g3, now you take on c6 and rook f3. But uh, you open up the game and bishop and rook combination, two pass pawns, right? M white, uh, black can hold, but it's not that easy. It's not that easy. However, in the game, white takes on c6. Doesn't make sense to me, this move, at all. Takes rook g1. And now here's a very important lesson in, the pawn, in the rook and pawn endgame. When you're done with material, to keep trading. Because rook versus rook and pawn, there's a good chance that he can hold. So here h5, this inclusion helps black. Okay, here is the key moment. Here, black can still hold. So he had easy draw, he, had, he was in a very good fight, but now he ended up in this endgame. So how can he make a draw? This, this one, this one deserves to spend some time on. I, I'll, give, I'll, let you some, I'll give you some time to think about it, maybe three, four minutes. There's only, to, to my surprise, there's only one way to make a draw in this position. Hmm? I see uh, Kalkalum that makes the draw. What's that? I'm looking at a lot of moves like Rook 6 and A4. Um, well, not, it's not about the, it's not only about Rook A3. Rook A3 also makes a draw. It's not that easy, but it also makes a draw. K3 makes a draw, okay. King G2. Uh, basically, whose turn it is? Is it black to play? Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, yeah, here, okay, rook G5, yes. Okay. Rook A3 here. Rook A3, rook F5, check. Rook c5. Takes on b2. Yeah, this is probably a draw. I thought you, you have only one best way to play. Rook a3 here. Rook a3, king g2. You said what do you do after king g2? Takes on b2. King f3. That's a draw. Okay, rook g2. After, like, rook e5? Mm -hmm. oh. um. Maybe, it's, it's probably that's also a draw. What I'm trying to say is that I try to avoid going to these equal end games where you win the b3 pawn and why it starts to push the connected pass pawns. Because it's not only about the equal material. It's about that if white can control one of the pass pawns of black, you cannot really push your pass pawns. But controlling those two pass pawns is very difficult. 
I have been on the winning side of this from white and on the losing side of it on the black side. It is equal, equal, and you keep on playing, but it's not so easy to play it. The connected pass pawns are far more dangerous than it seems. Yes, sir. We have a couple of suggestions here. Uh -huh. uh, Ragnarok 56 suggests rook e2. Rook e2, okay. That's a bit risky. It's still a draw, but it's a bit risky, okay. As well, a4. A4, no, 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 no. A4, I take play rook e5. A4, no, A4 takes, takes rook e5. I mean, maybe you can hold this one too. But I mean, it's, it's, I'm not sure. No, no, no. It's, pro it's very dangerous. Okay, a couple of players, uh, Angelos and Glenn, suggest king e6 first. Yes, king e6 is the, is the safest way of doing it. What else? Anything else? All I have is eventually rook a3. Yes, eventually rook a3, but first prepare for that. So th what I figured, uh, to what, what seemed the easiest way to me was to play king e6. Uh, okay, I'll try a few moves. If I go king g1, then king d6. I'm, I'm supporting my pieces, king f1, and then I go c5. The funny thing is that activity in the rook end game is more, imp not the funny thing, it's one of the important principles of the rook and pawn end game. Quality is more important than quantity. I want to go c4, a4, a3. Let's see what I'm going to do. e4, a4. Okay, this is an easy draw, right? If rook, e if rook e5, this is very interesting. I go rook d4. Now, if the rook goes back, I go back here. You cannot push the pawns. If you don't do that, king e2, I keep pushing the pawn. White cannot improve, right? Are we good? Does it make sense? Claudio, makes sense? So C five, E four, A four. This is a this is the way to do it. Okay, wait a second. King E six. Okay, I will look at E four. If if I if I go E four right here. Then rook f2, attacking that pawn. Rook g6, check. King f7. And if I go f5, here, here, I love this one. Rook e2, rook e6. It seems that white is making some progress. But the king is cut off on the second rank, right? c5, c4. I really like this idea. Now let's see what happens. So if I go rook a6, I just take on e4, rook a4, and then rook king f6. And that's it, right? I take and then king goes to c8, right? Easy draw. Make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Claudia, you good? Active play. Ensure, uh, secure the draw. Ensure your draw with, the, with, the, with active play. Ben, does it make sense for, for, for the audience? Any questions about this? They're silent, so I think silent. Makes sense. that makes sense. Makes sense. Fantastic. They don't talk. That's fantastic. Well, I mean, we would like them to talk, but if it makes sense, fantastic. This is another another one. The most challenging one is rook e5. Check king d6, king g1, still c5. I'm in rook a3. Now your plan also works. Your your idea works too. C5 and uh, the same idea. C4 and also, rook a3 works. But now, here, what's the best way to make a draw? Uh, rook check and rook b4, yes. You, you sacrifice a pawn, rook takes a5, rook takes a5, rook takes e4. You have to eliminate one of the two pawns. You give up the other two. You give up your two, and then this is just a simple draw. And then we know the full leader position, right? I mean, this is the draw, right? It's a side defense. This is, he cannot go, he cannot go. 
any further and that's the place to go because if I mean I think e e8 should be also a draw yeah because we have to looking for check but not here right um, still what's that Oh, you could you could take the pawn too. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just take the pawn to cafe. But even not that, you can just stay here. It's a folded position. So simple. Anyways, it was. I think it was an interesting game. So what happened then? You think? What do you think about C five? Was it a good move or not? If we want to give Len Lenard Lenard and L E N H A R D T. I hope he liked the uh, our analysis. Kind of, we moderately managed to analyze it. Uh, let's see what happened actually how he lost the game actually he played this move this and he plays c5 after this what happened is that the problem is not here he, he was not in time because if we need to provoke the move e4 if the pawn was on e4 we could go rook c2 take the pawn and then attack the pawn on on uh, e4 but now this king is active and there's no pawn on e4 to take that extra tempo dif makes makes a huge difference the funny thing is that you usually think that oh i do not have to provoke my opponent's pawns to be pushed right but in that case if the pawn is pushed is farther away from the king so the king cannot the king could could not reach out to the pawns and support them in time but in this case not not provoking them to push is that they were they were kind of behind and the king had just a couple of tempi to get them now this is probably totally lost I don't think so and, uh, yeah I mean f6 I think the nicest way is actually to play king g5 king f6 so and he lost the game so let's go back to the position right that was a critical moment c5 right shall we now, since we have looked at everything, let's go back to that position. All right. So is queen eight? So where did where did black go wrong? Let's let's see. Queen eight was a mistake, but then so he had to go king h eight. I like this bishop d eight. Do you think this is the main mistake? Bishop takes f6? What do you think? There is some turning point. Or maybe that f takes g4. What do you think? Because it's not only about what the, what, what the engine says. It may be 0, 0 for a long time. But what matters is where and at what point did the trend of the game change? It changed, to a, to, it changed into a different uh, momentum. It changed into a different dynamic where black was not accustomed to. When you give up the pawn? Um, what do you think, Ben? It's not about making sense. Which moment was a cri critical moment in this game? So, uh, for the benefit of uh, our audience and uh, whoever may watch this video, uh, when I analyze my game, I try to find the critical moments. Over the board critical moments. Not only, okay, I made this mistake. I, I, I had plus one and a half, and then I made this mistake, and it's not plus uh, 0.5. If I cannot see it, if I don't see it, if it doesn't make sense to me, it's not a critical moment. What matters is to find the critical moment, the moments that you understand and you missed, and the moment that the trend of the game, the way the game was going, changes. You were attacking, but now you have to defense now. The game was equal, but now it's still equal, but it's not as easy as it used to be. So you were too relaxed to play those moments. So if I were to talk about the critical moments of this game, the first one is obviously C5, right? That's immediately right, right in the opening, right? And then I think the second critical moment, I don't consider this one very critical, this g takes f6 or not. But I consider this moment very critical, king h8. Because I think that extra tempo with bishop e6 could have helped him a lot and he wouldn't have gone through all this hassle of uh, dealing with g4. And... Uh, And I find this again here, f takes g4, another critical moment. Because 
he lets go of his activity with f takes g4. So black switches from being on the active side of the game to the passive side of the game. And the next one, actually, he, he did not miss this critical moment. He found this idea, queen d2. So I, actually, he deserves this exclaim here. Is obviously this moment where he plays rook e2, which got him into trouble. Maybe there is a draw. I don't know. But king e6 active play was what could secure him with a draw. All right. Any questions? No, nothing. Everyone calm. So I had another. Oops, sorry, not that. So somebody else has added a question. Oh, sorry. I should not open my email right here. I cannot do anything <laughs> about that. I really should not open my email. Wait a second. Wait a second. Here's the game. I should have entered this game earlier. So someone asked the question about not winning winning positions. So I'm going to moderately. What's that? That's a huge description. Yeah, I read through it and uh, the problem of conver uh, converting a winning position. So first of all, for, uh, first and foremost, the most difficult task in chess is to win a winning position. If if you can be good at that, then you are in really good shape. So in this game, white is up a pawn simply in a not exactly symmetrical but white is simply up a pawn black has no compensation zero compensation so you want to talk about winning this position so white is incomplete in, in, in complete uh, control and it, it's, it's totally dominated board I'm so tired sometimes I say things okay <laughs> What's the, what's the, what's the white's main advantage? The extra pawn, right? You, the first thing you have to think about is to tra trade-offs. Which trade-off is the most common? Is the most probable one in this position? Rook and rook. Rook and rook, right? On the h-fall, right? Is the knight endgame winning? That's the first question you have to ask yourself. It is probably winning. Also. Uh, if you were in doubt, you always can recall what Bud thinks about the night night end games. The night end games are like pawn end games. If you are down, if you are down a pawn in the night end games or in, in pawn end games, you you may end up losing, and that's pretty much the case here. So that being said, what move would you have played here? Yep, yeah, knight g two. Then you go f four. Your knight can go to e3. So if you go c5, c takes d4, your knight can simply support and you can go f5. So that's the first miss. But then, okay, even though he did not do well, he still managed to get his this winning position. And then opponent played this move in desperation. Takes and takes on f5. Now, for winning this game, the most important thing is that find the easiest solution. Do not try to hold. Okay, what's it? Uh, rook h1, rook d1. Yeah, you need your rook to be active, right? So actually, actually, I'm not going to take on a3. I I want to get to this this pawn. I would go here. I would go here. So now, if I uh, if I want to do that, if I go here. Ninety-six. Okay, now this knight is kind of getting active, right? So I had to win this pawn. And you have enough activity. You go rook a seven, a four, a four, a five, right? It's it's winning, right? Well, let, how winning is it? Doesn't seem as obvious to me, but now you can play this one, huh? In the game, in the game, White played this move c4 a bit early, knight g6, and now he cannot go rook h3. When you have a winning position, dominant winning position, always prepare. 
This is not that easy. As you can see, we are making mistakes. But first, activate your pieces. Not, rook is much favorable over over a uh, knight, right? So use use it as a um, use it in the most efficient way. Another way to to play is was this maybe knight e six. And now rook h1, maybe. Because if take now, I have king f4. So in terms of playing, for, uh, I, I, I will conclude with a few recommendations for winning a winning position. Uh, first thing is that to win a winning position, always study prophylactics. Like, don't, don't open your emails when you are live streaming. Uh, <coughs> For winning, uh, I suggest you to go on the websites that they live. Uh, li uh, they show the tournaments going on live, and uh, watch the bar. For example, Chess Twenty Four, uh, or uh, even they follow on Lee Chess or Chess dot com, or uh, all of them that they show live Chess Bomb, and see the, the, the where the bar change uh, goes up and down. You know, see this plus one, and suddenly White makes a mistake. So why he made a mistake? and try to understand and learn those and collect those positions for yourself and review them the, the collection part is the easy part the review is the harder part every time you look at it there is something oh what about this move by the way I think this way you learn about opponents counterplay the possibilities and that way you start to developing an eye for okay I got this kind of advantage how I can convert it that is the best way to do it by self-learning specific book about it I don't know, not to, the, to my knowledge. There are many books out there that they teach you techniques, but converting a winning position, because there are all kinds of winning positions you get from time to time. I would just say, try to find positions from tournament games where one side made, made, made a mistake and try to learn how to convert those positions. Okay, I think that's about it for now. We will have another one about the modern eras, uh, sorry, for the romantic era of chess. We'll do some checkmate together. And also, I'll show a game of mine inspired by, by, a, by a romantic game. So we can look at it together. All right. Any questions? All good? We'll see you in uh, six minutes.